in the sub region self reliant that is yet to be achieved too. for Chawara's visionary ideas after independence still drive socio economic advancement across the sub region. One such initiative was the organization of the Gambia River Basin ONVG, which was co founded by the former Gambian leader and former Senegalese president, Leopold Sidat Senghor, shortly after independence. The OMVG is still benefiting millions in the sub-region. Nous venons rendre à César ce qu'il lui doit, tout l'honneur qui vous convoit. The euh, vision that you have had at the time, grand it, uh, to, uh, for the creation of uh, the OMVG. I mean, uh, what motivated you at the time to think of an organization like this? That today, the entire region sub-region of uh, Africa are benefiting from your vision, your thinking. And today we are seeing the fruit, fruits of that vision. I welcome your visit here on this purpose for us to run for, for, for a short while at least concentrate our attention on the organization that you represent for us all. Now we are trying to derive some practical benefits from this organization, uh, moving now from history to actual facts, and so that we all, the Gambia and uh, at least four countries in the sub region, are uh, expecting the returns now from this organization. But when Sadawda led the country after colonialism, the struggle for independence started long before Jawara appeared on the scene, with the emergence of trade unions contributing immensely in ending colonial rule. The architect of these trade unions was one Edward Francis Small, a writer and a keen unionist who pioneered the Gambia's road to independence. Born in Patos and schooled in Freetown, Ceredion, Edward Francis Small's revolutionary ideas were precipitated by the famous Balangat incident in 1917 when he fought with a British merchant called James Walker, who was living in Balangat village at the time. This will lead to his subsequent dismissal from the Methodist mission. The Balangat incident marked the beginning of Francis Small's long and difficult journey to free the Gambia. The struggle lasted several years, and Edward Francis Small kept pushing despite challenges in his way. From the 1920 National Congress for British West Africa meeting held in the Gold Coast to the founding of the first Gambian trade union in 1928, the emergence of these vital institutions was crucial in the drive towards independence by exerting constant pressure on the colonial masters. As a result, the British started softening their stance and in 1930, the first representative institution called the Battles Urban District Council was established and Francis Moore became an elected member of the council in 1942 and went on to serve in various capacities until his demise in 1958. Edward Francis Small didn't live to see the success of his struggle and the departure of the colonial masters, but the former clergyman, teacher, journalist, civil rights activists and trade unionists set the foundation that paved the road to the Gambia's independence and will always be remembered during the country's independence and anniversary. Mr. Chair, GRS News. We'll on Sunday celebrate 53 years of independence. It is important to revisit history and to remember that the road to independence wasn't an easy ride but a struggle well fought. In the forefront of the struggle were formidable men, including the first president of the Republic, Sadauda Kerava Jawara. However, it is worthy to note that women energized these efforts. A woman played a very, very important part in pre independent politics, starting um, with the politics um, of the Batos. But in 1931, the Batos Town Council was established. And it was there 
that the first woman to be elected into political office, you know, as councillors, you know, were elected. I mean, said as I mean, Hannah Mahoney, you know, who was the wife of Sir John Mahoney, the first Gambian speaker. Um, you had another, you know, woman, you know, councillor, like a lady councillor, the like Hannah Foster. Okay, you had another lady, you know, councillor, I and mean, Cecilia Moore. All this was in the 1930s. So these were the you know, earliest women um, to get involved in elective politics. And Hannah Costa became a founder member of the first political party established in the Gambia in 1951, the Gambia Democratic Party you know, of Reverend Jesse Fai. And she was a financier. Uh, and of course, she was a merchant, you know, you know, very wealthy woman. She was the one who used to you know, bring out all the money you know, for the Asobis, a delegation to London, UK in 1961 marked the beginning of frank talks towards independence. Among them was Rachel Palmer, who helped break new grounds towards the attainment of independence. You know, Ms. Rachel Palmer, she was a member of the Gambian delegation which went to London in 1961 um, to discuss constitutional development for the Gambia towards independence. She was selected as an independent member because um, this is called the Lancaster House Talks. Now, the, you know, the Lancaster House Talks of 1961 led to the 1962 Constitution, okay, which was the Constitution, you know, which was independence. And, and according to the records, you know, Ms. Palmer played a very, very important part uh, because she was seen as the mediator. Because the politicians were there, uh, you know, quarreling over procedure and so on. But he would always, you know, come in between them. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, as a, you know, like sort of, a, I mean, like an appeaser. It is fair to say that the formation of the Women's Bureau in post-independent Gambia to recognize women and their significant contributions towards nationhood was apt. Before independence, women were forced of national politics. Now, after independence, I mean. You know, they are relegated. For example, there was no woman MP until 1968. The UK government established the Bureau in 1979, so as to be the clearing house. African women, in particular Gambian women, are a source of strength. Arguably, without women, the struggle for independence couldn't have been eventful or perhaps successful without the crucial and significant role women played. Report.